From Little Rocket Man to the best of buddies, that's a, a replay there of the comments we had earlier from uh, the leaders of the US and uh, North Korea. I'm joined in the studio by our political correspondent Kim Min-ji and James Kim from the Asan Institute of Policy uh, Studies. Uh, let's turn to you, uh, Minji. The um, delegations are now in these extended uh, talks. Um, what do we think will be under discussion there? Well, the talks got off at 9.45 a.m. local time, so about 11.45 here in South Korea, so just about 20 minutes ago. Um, what could be on the table? We don't know for sure, but the two leaders are definitely under pressure to come up with something more than what they reached in Singapore last year. The focus, again, will probably be getting concrete denuclearization steps on the side of Pyongyang and on the U.S. part, corresponding measures such as the easing of sanctions and re improving bilateral relations. Now, um, potential outcomes could include agreements from North Korea to possibly allow inspectors to certain nuclear sites or um, missile test pads that it's already mentioned, possibly a decision to shut down the Yongbyon nuclear complex, and maybe possibly a timeline um, that would see North Korea's denuclearization plans down the road. In exchange, Trump could offer to begin um, moving toward formal diplomatic relations, which could involve the exchanging of liaison officers, which we've already seen in reports. There could also be a declaration to end the 1950-53 Korean War, and possibly some sanctions related which could see the, um, inter, um, inter, the intercooperation between the two Koreas. Mm. Okay, and uh, James Kim, um, we're looking at replays of the uh, mini uh, breath of fresh air stroke stroll around the um, grounds of the hotel. These videos and uh, photos of Kim Jong-un with the most powerful man in the world are uh, beamed back to North Korea, as we know. Do you think that's part of the, the plan of raising the status of Kim Jong-un uh, with his own people? I think this is a big show for both leaders. Um, they want to put on, you know, a nice, uh, uh, nice image out there. And certainly Kim Jong-un has already uh, um, further bolstered his position um, as the most powerful man in North Korea by having the first ever historic summit in Singapore already. Mm -hmm. um, for him to be able to do this again, um, I think, you know, um, it adds to that. But uh, for the North Koreans, they also want something out of this, deal, uh, out of this meeting. So they're looking for uh, a good deal as well. And until he delivers, um, he's, he's not going to get much here than what he already got uh, from Singapore. Right, and uh, Minji, going back to you, um, after this uh, extended summit that we just saw there is going to last quite a while, can you just give our uh, international viewers and our viewers in Korea who've been watching us intently for the past few hours just a rundown of what happens next, starting with uh, a, luncheon, a luncheon, I believe. Yes, all right. that's right. So this extended summit is expected to last approximately two hours, just over two hours, because their um, joint lunch is scheduled at 11.55 local time, which is 1.55 p.m. here in South Korea. What we're seeing on the screen now is possible... Um, the attendees for the extended summit. Now, I'm not sure if Kim Yok Chal and Stephen Began are part of the talks. I've, spe um, I've seen reports that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and um, John Bolton, well, the National Security seen, Advisor, um, is part of the talks. We've seen yes. Pompeo already. Yeah. And on the North Korean side, Kim Yong Chal and Lee Yong-ho was also one of the possible people that could have been there. Um, as for the remainder of the day after their joint lunch, they, uh, the two leaders will sign a joint summit agreement in the afternoon. That's 2.05 local time, so around 4 p.m. here in the afternoon. And a press conference is also scheduled for 3.50 local time. But because it's at um, U.S. President Donald Trump's um, hotel, there is speculation that he will just be there alone. Okay, uh, James, uh, while, while we take a look at that uh, CG there, we must say that isn't confirmed uh, at all. It's just an expected list of who might be among the, the uh, delegations. Um, 
James Kim, let's uh, talk a bit more about uh, what we can expect to come out of the, the summit today. Uh, the U.S. Is, is desperate to see some more specifics. That's um, among the uh, names of the game today, along with verification of the Norse nuclear stockpiles and uh, missile silos and whatnot, uh, inventories of the regime's arsenal, roadmaps and clear-cut uh, commitments with actual figures to back it up. What are your thoughts on uh, us seeing that later today? Uh, well, you know, there's a range of different things that um, both leaders can offer one another. Um, we do know that um, the, you know, on the lower rung of the ladder, there are things like humanitarian aid and cultural exchanges, which were signaled by Steve Began before. Um, liaison office opening, which, by the way, was in the 94 agreed framework as well. So um, these are some easy measures that um, the U.S. can offer up. Uh, North Korea can also, also um, allow for um, an international inspection of you know, both Dongchangli and Pungiri. Um, that would be uh, a very significant uh, from um, sort of the inspection standpoint. But we already know that those facilities have been dismantled. Nonetheless, getting the inspectors in there, I think that's relatively low rung of the ladder. So, so your institute uh, assesses that the Yongbyong reactor has been dismantled? Well, no, I was, talk I was talking about the Pungiri test site. No, okay, the Pungiri. And, and, and then Dongchangli missile test site. And then Yongbyong, there are disagreements on this, um, depending on who you talk to. Um, some uh, nuclear experts say that the Yongbyong facility has been closed. But again, Yongbyong isn't just one facility. There are m many facilities in Yongbyong. Um, and the question is, will North Koreans allow for unfettered access into Yongbyon? And um, will it include the highly really enriched uranium facilities, um, the enrichment facilities? And will they allow for international inspection and verification of that? That's the big question. And, and then afterwards, then we could talk about the full declaration of all the, you know, fissile materials that North Koreans have. Um, Maybe there's on the lower rung of the ladder dismantlement of the um, the ICBMs that the North Koreans possess, um, along with um, you know um, a scheduled inspection list. Um, but we're I think really far away from those things um, because none of this has been mentioned. Do you and see a possibility of that being agreed to though at all, even the slightest possibility? Yeah, there's a, <laughs> everything is possible. Um, uh, anything is possible at this point, but two hours um, to even work out Yongbyon, I think, is going to be um, a tall order. Right. While we're on the subject of Yongbyon, uh, the nuclear complex in North Korea, uh, Minji, tell us more about that and just how important of a role does it play in the regime's uh, nuclear defense? So Yongbyon is considered the center and symbol of North Korea's nuclear development program. Um, the complex actually dates back to the 60s when North Korea um, constructed an atomic research center um, there back um, with assistance from the then Soviet Union. Currently, there are reportedly about 400 buildings within the complex, so it's not just one thing. Um, the complex houses um, numerous installations for all types of nuclear development. Uh, we know that they have facilities to produce plutonium and highly enriched uranium as well. So some have said that if a deal is made within uh, Regarding Yongbyon, it would be it would be considered a first step of an irreversible phase of denuclearization. Okay, and uh, James Kim, the difference between plutonium and uranium enriched nuclear uh, missiles. Can you describe in more detail what that means and what percentage, what proportion of each are thought to be held by North Korea? Yeah, there are different estimates on this. Um, some people have already said that. North Koreans have enriched enough uranium for 20 to 40 bombs. Um, uraniums are, will make for a more powerful bomb. Um, it will be uh, more destructive Is than that plutonium. Right? Yeah. Okay. So um, that's where the Americans are, are, are most in, interested in. Uh, plutonium, um, uh, plutonium, they've already tested. They already know that there, um, a lot of these tests uh, correspond to what they think about uh, um, how much the North Koreans have on plutonium, but it's the, it's the enriched uranium that the Americans are more interested in.
Why? Because the yield is that much stronger? Yeah, the yield is much stronger and it's more destructive. And in regards to the radiation levels, there's very little difference between plutonium and uranium? I think, you know, you got, it's, it's, let's put it this way, to put it simply, without getting overly technical, it's still a nuclear bomb. <laughs> you wouldn't be happy if it blew up um, anywhere near you. Right, absolutely. And uh, let's uh, talk more about uh, the um, elephant in the room during these talks because we're seeing President Trump, a replay of him having his uh, little uh, chat outside with North Korean leader uh, Kim Jong-un. But uh, China hangs over these talks as per usual uh, Minji, what do you think President Xi Jinping is thinking looking at these images right now? Well, he's probably keeping close tabs on the situation as well. Like in the past, in the Singapore summit, we saw Kim Jong-un using um, the Chinese plane to get to Singapore. So we can see that he's very supportive of the talks. We've heard him also say that he's very supportive of the talks. But currently, China is not in the best situation with the U.S. It's engaged in a trade spat. Mm. So depending on the outcome here, we'll have to see how China responds to this. On the way back, for North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. We don't know if he's going to make a visit to China and possibly visit um, President Xi Jinping. We'll have to see there. But um, China has been maintaining um, sanctions on North Korea substantially in order uh, because um, U.S. President Donald Trump has, set, has thanked him previously for impo ha imposing these mm. sanctions. So, if these sanctions are eased to a certain point, it could also step up cooperation between the two. Like, China already accounts for over 90% of North Korea's trade. James, what's your assessment of how um, well China is implementing UN Security Council sanctions on China? There's been a bit of disagreement on that. And do you think Beijing is putting pressure on Kim Jong-un uh, on what's going to happen at this summit? So we have to understand that China is a big country. And so to the extent that it is so large, um, the Chinese authorities have, um, to some extent, um, limited understanding about all the exchanges that are happening across the borders. So um, while there may be some uninformed or, you know, um, that the, there are exchanges that the regime doesn't know much about, that is, the Chinese central government doesn't know much about, um, to the extent possible, based on the meetings that I've had in Washington, uh, with, for instance, the Treasury Department, mm. uh, who enforces these sanctions, um, they think that the Chinese are, in fact, um, um, playing along and uh, cooperating um, in, 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 you know, in a positive way uh, in, on implementing the sanctions so that, you know, it brings enough pressure on North Korea to get them to the bargaining table. So in that case, why isn't North Korea's economy literally falling apart? Well, I mean, you know, this is a, this is a mystery, and some people say that it's what Kim Jong-un has done internally. Uh, by allowing for Jangmadangs and by allowing for these little markets um, to flourish um, and, and that North Korea has in fact changed. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. Um, we, we also know that there's got to be some illicit trades going on that the central government doesn't know much about. So um, you have to add all of this together, I think, um, and to simply say that, you know, Chinese authorities are not cooperating. Uh, I haven't seen any evidence to suggest that um, this is, you know, um, this is from the Chinese authorities that are that are doing that are bypassing sanctions informally. But you know, we could there could be um, certain actors that are engaged in some illicit trades that the Chinese authorities don't know about. But as far as um, what you know, what we know uh, coming out of the Treasury on this is that the Chinese are in fact complying. Okay, so in regards to other countries which North Korea has. Uh, traditionally close ties with Iran, certain countries in Africa, other countries with similar political ideologies like Cuba. Uh, clearly they are much further away geographically, but there's no sign there that these countries are, are getting away with any serious sanctions violations in regards to North Korea. Right, and so this is a very difficult um, problem. Um, so any um, ideas about even temporary sanctions relief um, I think it's going to be very hard to turn, turn that back on. Um, this was what we saw uh, with Banco Delta Asia. Um, so um, part of the reason why the Trump administration is holding out and not agreeing to even a partial sanctions relief um, until North Korea agrees to complete denuclearization. Um, 
but you know, this wasn't uh, that long that we've had North Korea under this uh, very, very um, damaging um, sanctions um, that the U.S. has just started to impose towards the end of the Obama administration, moving into the beginning of the Trump administration. So we haven't really seen what uh, these sanctions can do. It takes time for the sanctions to take effect, hmm. uh, in other words. And uh, Minji, you've been reading a lot of uh, South Korean media and keeping your, your eye on the ball in regards to the pre-summit build-up. Uh, within the South Korean media circles, is there much expectation that uh, this much vaunted uh, potential peace uh, declaration to end the Korean War between the US and North Korea might actually happen? Um, it's very divided. It depends on who you talk to. Like, is the coming up with a declaration to end the Korean War obviously would be some would be a symbolic gesture, technically, because all parties involved in the war, which includes North Korea and South Korea, China, and the U.S., they would all need to come together in the end to officially sign a peace treaty. But the declaration itself would only be a political agreement. But nonetheless, people are still concerned that be, if the two sides are to declare the end of war, the North could step up pressure on the U.S. to possibly withdraw some of its troops within the U.S. or within South Korea, although Trump has said that that won't be a summit agenda. And uh, James, while we're looking at uh, the replay of the two leaders taking a stroll around the grounds of their hotel in Hanoi where they're holding the summit, as you can see, this expanding meeting with senior officials is expected to last over two hours and it started around 35 minutes ago. So still plenty of time. Then they're going to enjoy a lunch. Um, I heard one expert on North Korea saying that in Singapore, James, they had a meal together and the American delegation sat down for their meal and the North Korean delegation sat down for their meal. By the time they were all done, the American plates were clean, they'd eaten everything. The North Korean plates were all completely full. Um, <laughs> do, have you ever had any, any experience with uh, North Korean officials either in the United States and South Korea? Is there some reason why they are very protective, very uh, uh, concerned about their own safety perhaps? Well, I mean, that's always been the case, but uh, it's, it's uh, a little unusual why they would be uh, uh, that afraid, uh, if, if at all, to touch their food. Um, I do know that for last night's dinner, they had um, a mixture of Korean and uh, Western affair. And maybe it was the maybe it was the quality of food that they got in Singapore. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea why why they didn't uh, they didn't want to eat the food that they had. So um, again, um, I think we're jumping. Uh, but to not eat anything. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Yeah. I would say. But you know, Kim Jong Un is staying at a hotel. I doubt that he's cooking his own meal. Right. Um, so. Um, uh, overall, um, I think, you know, maybe we're, we're reading too far into things uh, about, you know, what the North Koreans, you know, yeah. their view about security and, and, and their concerns about what might be in the food that they're getting. Right, absolutely.